There was a significant amount of logging that happened um, along the edges here that um, the stumps have been filled over. Because before, Jack, the trees would have been right here. We were in an old, old growth forest here. There was, had been absolutely no logging. Well, imagine that a forest could be worth more than um, pulp or your two by four. I had the great fortune of uh, a happenstance meeting with Peter Quinby and learned about his work in Peterborough County, uh, trying to identify old growth forests and using citizen science to, uh, to, to get some of the metrics. And we realized there was a pretty nice opportunity for students to play a role. Peter came into the class, explained his work, explained the project, and told us about this new forest uh, that needed some survey work. It looked like there was some old growth. Should I write this down? Yeah. We fell in love with the forest. This is before any cutting had taken place, but we were very aware of the fact that any tree that was marked with yellow was set to come down. Our metrics work quickly turned into advocacy work, and we reached out to the forest company and connected with Peter, with uh, Katie Krilov of the Wilderness Committee, and understood the role of an ungovernmental organization in advocacy came back to the forest several more times and sort of watched with, with um, some obviously concern in subsequent visits, we were in the forest with the loggers. And we literally watched the trees come down. And I have with different classes, this is the third class that's been out in the forest. Um, every time I come here now, it's more and more difficult to move around because there's so much slash. And some of the parts, the treasured places that we used to visit that were these beautiful spots tucked in this, this old growth forest. Um, they don't exist anymore. I'm very fortunate to have grown up, actually, in an old growth hemlock forest in Algonquin Park at my family cottage. I've always had a sort of a personal connection with the forest, especially old growth forests. When I was finishing up my PhD work at the University of Toronto, I was approached by the Tomogamy Wilderness Society to uh, investigate the potential for uh, the occurrence of old growth white and red pine forests in Tomogamy, Ontario. So that information was then used to advocate for uh, the conservation and protection of old growth forests in the Tomogamy region. It certainly helped to kind of sort of catapult me um, and the issue of old growth forest ecology and conservation to a higher level. I've continued to, to study, uh, identify, characterize, and, and, and push for the protection of old growth forests throughout Ontario. So in this old growth uh, hemlock stand here at Kachikoma, um, almost everywhere you look, you'll find patches, dents, patches of young hemlock seedlings and saplings that are growing up. Uh, they look very healthy. There's no hemlock woolly adelgid on them. These seedlings and saplings represent the next generation of big trees. So this is a self-replacing old growth forest. It doesn't need human help to be healthy or to survive or to continue on as a natural ecosystem. The old growth hemlock stand that's located at the north end of Kachikoma Lake, we call it the Kachikoma Forest, was pretty unknown, relatively unknown, until I received some funding from the Ontario Trillium Foundation uh, to study and identify, characterize, and work towards the conservation of old growth forests in Peterborough County. From that work was 
finding the Cachacoma uh, Old Grove Eastern Hemlock Forest. And we've since discovered that it's the largest known old growth Eastern Hemlock Forest in Canada. It should be protected and currently it's not protected and 1,600 acres of an old growth hemlock forest is very unusual. How old is it? 250. And how long can hemlocks live? Is that considered old growth, 250? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Both Kevin and I have worked uh, all over Ontario, um, and uh, both of us have never seen an old growth forest uh, of a hemlock, a straight hemlock, uh, this impressive. So. And here's only like 20. You mean 20 remaining kind of yeah. thing? Which is extremely low. I had contacted Peter and he told me about this project that he was right in the middle of, of surveying uh, in Kachakoma, and he was really excited about uh, the size and the quality of the old growth uh, hemlock stand that they had found there. I just fell in love with the forest myself right away and I could see uh, that it needed protecting. It started out with, okay, let's just see if we can put off the the logging that's about to happen and then we can push forward with the campaign to actually make it protected forever. We are working on getting a moratorium on further logging here while we work to get protected status for this forest. You're looking for, to get the most value for this tree out of timber, this is the time to cut it, right when it's on set, because it's not gonna grow much bigger after that, okay? So this is when you wanna cut it, because after that it's not putting on any more, as much wood. My name is Linda Bryden and uh, I am part of the Ketchikoma Forest Stewardship Committee. My name is Marie Windover and I believe the Ketchikoma Old Growth Hemlock Forest should be protected. My name is Adam Folland and I believe the Ketchikoma Forest should be protected. We're walking through the Ketchikoma Forest and I firmly believe it should be protected. I'm Ted Spence and I, uh, and I believe that Ketchikoma Forest deserves full consideration for potential uh, protection. We contacted the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Bancroft Minden Forest Company to let them know that they were in fact logging in Canada's largest known eastern hemlock old growth forest. And it was really met with no response except to say that it was not old growth and that um, the logging that was going to happen was good for the forest. On this side and on that side is where they were proposing to do their next logging over the next 10 years. They will only acknowledge that this little red part is old growth. Okay. Uh, down by the cottages, basically. Yeah. Uh, and that's based on their like aerial um, inventory. inventory, aerial photography. Uh, and basically we've compared what we've done with coring to these ages. On average, the ages of the trees we're coring are about 58 years older than what this data is showing. 
And so that's the whole time we've been trying to say, okay, well, let's, can you go in there and verify our data? Like get your own people in there and core the trees. And uh, they just wouldn't do it. <laughs> But yeah, we did go in there. The data that the Ontario government, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry um, has on forests is very much reliant on um, sort of aerial photography data, which means that they don't have a lot of information about a lot of forests. So very little forests have been ground truthed. And that's the work that Afer had, and Peter Quimby had started to do. So when we brought that on the ground, ground truth uh, surveys to the forest company, to the, the province, to the Ministry of Natural Resources, I mean, I, I think we all kind of expected them to take, to take notice. An old growth eastern hemlock forest has to have eastern hemlock trees that are at least 140 years of age, some standing dead trees that we call snags, and some logs on the forest floor. They se sequester massive amounts of carbon, they store that carbon, and as we all know, we are now facing a climate crisis and a biodiversity crisis. They're important for providing oxygen and maintaining water quality, preventing soil erosion. Once we understand the importance of natural capital or all the values that old growth forests have, protecting that ecosystem is, is a no-brainer. It's got ecological conservation values, it's got recreational values, uh, and it's got research and educational values as well. Ontario as a province and Canada and the international community uh, recognizes that we need more protected places. Many countries, including Canada, have signed on to protect 25% of lands by 2025 and 30% by 2030. Here in Ontario, we have only 10.7% protected places. That number hasn't budged in a decade. So we do need to be adding more protected places and more conservation areas. We want to make sure that those places uh, represent high quality ecosystems, represent unique and rare ecosystems, um, and have the most ecological value and old growth forests are, are it. We're dealing here with a forest type in decline, an old growth forest condition that's extremely rare, and a number of species at risk. It qualifies in so many ways to be protected as a, we think, a conservation reserve. As we all know, we are now facing a climate crisis and a biodiversity crisis. If we can protect all the remaining old growth forests in the temperate forest region of Ontario, we're going to go a long way towards helping to manage climate warming. Logging has its place in our economy, in the things that humans need to survive, but there is also a place for protection. Some forests, because of their rarity of their uniqueness, have much more value uh, ecologically intact, non-logged, than they do being logged. You can find all those values here in spades.
we need to recognize that and, and, and prioritize those values over the value of fiber. You know, like we don't need this log, we can get logs like this somewhere else. Let's not lose all of our natural heritage and say, oh my God, it's gone. What are we going to do now? Let's save it now. Two years ago, um, Peter Quinby, who you're the name you're getting to know, you saw his picture. Um, when that picture was taken, actually, where we were earlier this morning, uh, was exploring uh, old growth forests in the Peterborough County. And he, of course, is one person and he has a staff of two. And it's pretty hard for three people to, to figure out where is the old growth and actually document it. So that they're using what we know as citizen science. I think you understand that idea where anybody with interest and a little bit of skill or training can step up um, and um, contribute to the science. Okay. Okay, is any group not have it? Right on it. Okay, let's just look at it together for a moment. Is that the conversion sheet? Um, the top is yeah. the general stuff. 140 years old is considered old growth. That corresponds generally to about a 40 centimeter uh, diameter, uh, which is mathematically 126 um, circumference. We're, we're going to be the ones who really are going to make a difference in this issue for sure in the next like 10, 20 years. Uh, so learning more and knowing more is crucial to, you know, stopping the climate crisis. So it's all those tools we use to ultimately give young people a voice um, in protecting uh, their planet. And of course, everybody knows they're on this planet longer than I will be and have so much at stake. Young people have a voice in this topic and they need to speak out and they need to hear us. I think it's very important we protect the old growth forests. You'll never be able to experience anything like this and there's not much of it left so you have to embrace what we have and protect it. You can't plant old trees! If I had one word to say to my generation who, um, regarding climate and the environmental crisis, it would be to speak, to get your voice out there. 